Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to try to find the electric field at some distance away from an infinite large sheet of charge. And yes, we do call it a sheet of charge because we think of the sheet as being very, very thin, infinitesimal thin, and has a layer of charge on it. And the charge is defined as an area charge density. We use the letter sigma for that, and it's called charge per unit area. For example, 10 microcoulombs per square meter per unit area. And so let's say we want to find the electric field at some distance h above that infinite sheet. Now here again, we need to clarify, we need to make some assumptions. We assume that the sheet is very, very large. Of course, not infinite, it can be infinite, but let's say it's very large in such a way that the distance above the sheet is small, h is small, relative to the overall size of the sheet. We only show a small section of it, but we assume that it goes on for quite a ways, so that basically when you look up from distance h, you see a sheet of charge all the way around you. That's kind of the concept. Otherwise, this really wouldn't work. Then we have to do it a slightly different, well, actually quite a bit different. And so the way to do it again is since we make that assumption that the sheet of charge is very large, the distance h is small in comparison to the size of the sheet of charge, we can then use the equation that E times A is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course, this is the Gaussian surface, the surface of the Gaussian surface, the surface area, I should say, of the Gaussian surface. Now notice I've already pre-drawn pre the Gaussian surface. Realizing with an infinite sheet of charge, you're going to have an electric field that emanates away up in the upward, and we have electric field emanating downward. So the electric field is going to go in both directions because the, the sheet of charge is really, really thin, so you have electric field going up and going down at the same time because there's nothing else on both sides, just empty space with just a flat sheet of charge. So the Gaussian surface is now a cylindrical shape. It has the side area, it has the area at the top, and has the area at the bottom. But if you look, there's no electric field emanating to the side in this direction, so there's no electric field lines in, on the side of the Gaussian surface, so we don't have to worry about that part. We only have to worry about the bottom area here, which is, of course, the shape of a circle, and we have to worry about the top portion of the Gaussian surface because Electric field will go to that surface and will go to this surface. So those are the two surfaces we need to worry about when we try to find the Gaussian surface area right there. So rearranging the, unit, the, the variables, we can say that the strength or the magnitude of the electric field is equal to the charge inside divided by the area of the Gaussian surface times epsilon sub naught. And of course, in this case, you realize that the area is going to be twice the area of that circle because there's going to be symmetry here. They're really the same area. So it's twice the area of a single circle. So we can say that E is equal to Q inside divided by two times the area of that circle. Well, there the circle is going to depend upon how big I make the circle. And let's assume that I make the radius of that circle equal to R. So then I can say that's two times the area of that circle will be pi times r squared times epsilon sub naught, and two of them because we have one at the bottom and one at the top. We don't have to worry about the sides, no electric field going out the side. Now we still need to find the Q inside. So the Q inside can be found by taking the area charge density and multiplying that times the area of that circle, which by the way has to be the same as the area of this circle. So therefore we can say that E is going to be equal to the area charge density times the area of that circle, which is pi r squared, divided by 2 times pi r squared times epsilon sub naught. And interestingly enough, both pi r squared and the numerator and the denominator will cancel out which then tells us that the strength of the electric field at a distance h away from the infinite line charge, or I should say not line charge, but sheet of charge, is equal to 1 half sigma, oh, well, let's see here. It's probably better written like this. Don't use the 1 half, but simply write it as sigma divided by 2 epsilon sub naught. I think that's probably a better way of writing the end result. Notice that sigma is simply a constant given to us by the problem, whatever it may be. In this case, we pick 10 microcoulombs per square meter. And epsilon sub naught is a constant, is the primitive of your free space, which means that the strength of the electric field 
the magnitude of the electric field at any distance away, above or below the infinite sheet of charge, does not depend upon how far away from the sheet you are. So you can be a mile away from it, 10 miles away from it, 2 millimeters away from it, it doesn't matter. The strength of the electric field will be exactly the same. Again, provided that, of course, the size of the field is virtually infinite. Now, in reality, the way this really works is that as long as the distance h is small relative to the size of the sheet, you will be okay. If the size of the sheet is this big and you're a mile away from it, then obviously from a mile away it doesn't look like an infinite sheet, and so that will no longer work. It has to be relative. If the sheet is like 10 million miles in any direction and you're a mile away from the, from the sheet, it will still look like an infinite sheet from that finite point, and this will then work. So it's all dependent upon the relative size of h to the size of the whole sheet. If this is small relative to the size of the sheet, this will work, and that will be the answer. And yes, the 2 in the denominator is due because we have an electric field going up and an electric field going down from the sheet of charge. We'll show you another arrangement later where that will not be the case. But in this case, that is the correct answer, and this is how it's done.